A few months back, a subscriber asked whether we could have an update on my waterproofing details. And because it's rained so much recently, we're gonna have a look underneath the floor to see whether I've still got a swimming pool under there. We're gonna take a look underneath my block and beam floor in a few places, as well as check out inside my actual French drains. And we'll also check out the silk trap as well. It's currently Tuesday the 31st of October 2023. And it hasn't rained here for say two days. But yet there is a small stream out in the lane that continues to run. In terms of the lay of the land, all of the water ends up down the valley. Where this property sits, it's at the bottom of the lane. Before we take a look underneath the floor, I'll give you some background information. Now this started originally as a barn conversion. Then it ended up being a new build in the same style as that actual, what was supposed to be a barn conversion. Now, because the whole building came down, the whole land was actually flattened, that effectively created a bowl in clay. Now from there, the foundations went in, which were trench fill foundations, and uh, the walls were built up in trench blocks. By the time everything got done, we did end up with a bit of a moat outside and actually inside the property, we ended up with about four inches of water underneath the block and beam floor. That wasn't helped by me not having gutters. I still don't have gutters, but I knew it was gonna be a problem in the future and it's something I had to tackle there and then. I then proceeded to dig out my full foundation all the way down to the actual trench fill exposing all of the trench blocks then i cleaned off everything i had to put a concrete fillet at the bottom of the actual wall the junction between the trench blocks and the actual foundation and then from there i used another product to flatten off the wall and give it a bit of a, a key and then i put on something that's called mb2k and that's a like a flexible tanking membrane effectively from there, I then put in my actual French drains and uh, also done a number of actual clean out points just in case. And I've also put a silk trap on before it then runs off to the actual ditches. Now, before my foundation was waterproof and tanked, the water used to come through on the top side, make its way all the way through the building, get trapped inside and make its way back out down the bottom. The reason why that was mostly happening is because half the trench blocks wasn't actually jointed. I'll show you a clip now of the water actually coming out of the building. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see that. Can you see that's running water? So the brick layers, they haven't jointed all of the foundation blocks properly. So everything just runs through from the other side of the building. I did do a load of research on the actual problem and the reason why I actually used the tanking product that I did is because it was tested to resist hydrostatic pressure up to three meters and I only had to actually tank up to 1.2 meters. A common query with French drains is whether you should use a sock or not. I'm going to address that now just in case you do anything like this in the future. Now I actually use something that's called a twin wall land drain it's perforated all the way around. This is very, very strong. This is a geotech style non-woven fabric. The sock wraps around the pipe itself. You would put gravel all the way around. Now this geotextile membrane, it will get blocked eventually. But what you want to do is prolong that time frame. You should do what's called a burrito. Imagine this is my actual gravel. So there's my pipe and the duvet is my gravel. So the membrane goes around the gravel and the pipe. And the reason why we do that is because that's increased the surface area. If this is gonna get blocked up, the surface area of this compared to a direct pipe is massive. So that's gonna prolong the life of your French drains. Let's take a look underneath the floor. Christ. Now underneath this floor, there used to be at least four, maybe five inches of water, pretty much bone bloody dry. That's all the way underneath. You can see the clay is pretty much, uh, it's still cracked like you get in a drought. 
over this side of the building is the deepest. There was water they used to collect under here. I'm going to look under here. I'll look in that corner as well because that's the deepest. And we're also going to look over this section. I believe there should be water in there still, potentially. That's on the basis that I didn't get these in until recently. Dry. Even over there, it's the lowest. It's like white stuff. So that corner is completely fine. I reckon in the centre is going to be fine. I'm just not sure about that bit over there. That's where I found a toad and rescued it because he didn't. He didn't want to get trapped underneath the floor. This one where the stairs are completely bloody dry. I do need to ask your opinion on something. Please do respond down below in the comments. You see where that post is there? That is gonna be the back wall of effectively where the kitchen is. That's effectively gonna be where the island is. Now, there should have been a soil pipe that should have come up in the center over there. Now, I did say to the contractor at the time, you haven't put that pipe in, and he said, oh no, don't worry about that, you do it afterwards. So I don't know whether that was one of them kind of like fobbing off kind of things or not. So that one I just showed you is just in there. That's the utility room. Now from there to there would mean I would need to do a 50 mil pipe. But do I run the 50 mil pipe through the insulation and get it in the wall into that pipe over there? My floor insulation is 150 mil thick. Or should I put it underneath the floor? That pipe, original pipe, it should have dropped in so about here and then come down and then just behind me over here there's a lintel there so that's where the pipe was supposed to go through that wall um, and there's a bit of ling mix on top there which tells me that existing um, pipe that I've got in the utility room is running about at this level and it probably comes up about over there on that side if i drop a 50 mil pipe down here strap it up to the top drill through the wall run it through there and then drop it in the top of that um pipe over there which option would you go for last one so the water used to sit down this front edge here. Looks dry. You check this out, look. And the nut's still there. It's nice and rusty, but at least it's not sitting in water anymore. Oh, I'm covered in cobwebs. Tanking, jobs are good in. I am not flooded underneath. And that's partly to do with the French drains as well. So we'll go and check them out now. My French drains run around the perimeter of the building. They start here. This is the highest point. This is the northeast corner. One runs that way all the way around and the other one runs that way. And on the opposite side of the building, they've dropped below the actual foundation and they join up roughly about here. You might be wondering exactly what these are. Well, these are the start of my clean out points. They are dotted around the building. And this one is quite high because I'm going to have a deck here. So I'm going to finish it in line with the deck. That's something that they do in America as well. It's just in case the drains get blocked and you've got the opportunity to jet it out. So I've got a DIY jetting kit that I've used previously. Talking to silt, this is my silt trap. This is at the very end of the run. And it's just to catch anything before it um, empties out into the ditch on my neighbor's land. This was an expensive purchase. We'll take a look if there's anything in here. But in the chamber itself, there's a couple of snails and a couple of little stones. But yeah, totally clear. So that tells me my burritos are working superbly. Um, there is a lot of gravel on most of it, it's only around this side I've actually put soil back on top. But there's 
what, 40 ton of um, pea shingle around everything, if not more. I'm gonna grab my inspection camera and we're gonna take a look down the actual French drains. Just before we look down the French drains, I just wanna show you, I've got a trench that's still like open here. This is supposed to be a foundation for a retaining wall. That is like full of water. And over here, it's even deeper. <laughs> that's like at least a foot deep. And over this side of the building where the road is, I've still got this open trench here. So there is also supposed to be like a mini retaining wall there before I can then get this rebuilt. This trench has no water in it at all. And that's because the French drain is just here. I'm using this inspection camera, but um, do you reckon I could just, let's slide that out instead. <laughs> I did get gifted this. I, I'll put a link in the description. I'm not gonna do a hard sell on it or anything. The company that gave it to me, um, they was meant to send me two so I could give one away, but they never sent me two. So I never done a video about it. It is waterproof and we can record on screen. Right, I've swatched it to the side camera as well as the front facing camera. What is happening there? Do you reckon the front facing camera's broken? Oh, it's got mud on it. <laughs> so not, not much silt at all, actually. There we go. What's that on the edge? Is that a bug? <laughs> it looks quite clear. I assume you see that bit on the left hand side of the screen. I assume that's the bottom. So yeah, there is a little bit of silt at the bottom, but I mean, that's nothing. These drains are like two, two years old. So yeah, maybe in 20 years, inject it if you need to. I'd call that a success, eh? I think tomorrow it's raining quite a lot, in the morning at least. So we might have a look in the um, silt trap to see if the water's flowing. If not, then I'll see you next week. Uh, tomorrow I'm also gonna go and have a look at a, a shit heap of a digger. So that might be actually be next week's video. My microphone's out of battery, but it absolutely smashed it down about an hour ago. And that is flowing. Nice. Y you need to see this out on the road though. Like, that's like a river now. Look <laughs> at that, it's bloody crazy. <laughs> See, we're at, we're at the bottom, basically. It goes up there and up behind me. Thankfully, it goes into my neighbour's pond there. It goes underneath. <laughs>